Hello, welcome to Fundamentals of Acoustics. Today is the third day of the current week and yesterday we had developed an expression for transmission loss for a muffler which is reactive in nature and the expression says that transmission loss for a muffler can be defined as 10 log 10 of 1 plus m minus 1 over m whole square, so that is m sin square k 2 l divided by 4. So, that is our transmission loss. Now, this transmission loss is going to be maximum. So, so far given m T L is equal to T L max when K 2 L equals pi over 2. Okay. So, if we have to maximize transmission loss, we have to choose the length in such a way that, so this essentially means that L is equal to pi over 2 K 2. Okay. So, we have to choose the length in such a way that uh, this equals pi over 2 divided by k 2. Now, what we will do is we will, so the other observation we note is that if m is more than 1, so this is one observation. The second observation is if m exceeds 1, if m, exce if m exceeds 1 then T L loss, transmission loss it goes up with increase in m. As m increases, transmission loss increases. So, if I have a longer section uh, which is section 2 of the, that is not a guarantee, but if I increase the cross sectional area and as I keep on increasing the cross sectional area of the middle portion, because m is what? m is a 2 over a 1. So, as I keep on increasing the middle portion of the overall reactive silencer, the transmission loss will keep on increasing. The third thing is T L equals 0 at K 2 L equals 0 and when K 2 L equals pi radians. Okay. So, what we will do is we will develop a plot. So, on the x axis I am going to plot k 2 l. Okay. So, typically k 2 is fixed for a, for, for a particular frequency we know k 2 and I am just essentially what the x axis means that for a given frequency I am increasing the length of the middle portion and on the vertical axis I am going to plot transmission loss. So, when k 2 l is 0 radians then at pi over 2 radians and at pi radians. So, this is pi radians. So, when at 0 radians the transmission loss is 0, at pi over 2 it is maximum and at pi it is again 0 and maybe the distance between pi and pi 2 
pi over 2 is not same. So, I have to relocate it. So, this is pi radians. So, the curve would look something like this. Okay. And let us say this curve corresponds to m equals m 1, some value of m 1, where m 1 m is equal to the ratio of a 2 over a 1. So, what will be the performance of the silencer if I increase m? So, if I increase m, my transmission loss curve will look something like this. So, this is m 2, where m 2 oops, is more than m 1 and if I increase my cross sectional area further for the middle portion, then the transmission loss curve will become m 3. So, that is our m 3. So, as I keep on increasing the cross sectional area of the middle portion which is region 2, the transmission loss keeps on increasing and for a specific value of m transmission loss is maximum when length is such that k 2 times l is equal to pi over 2 radians. Okay. So, using this understanding we can develop a reactive muffler and if we know that our particular engine or noise source is producing most of the noise for at a particular frequency, then for that frequency we can design a reactive muffler uh, which has a length such that k 2 times l equals pi over 2 radians and for that length I can increase the transmission loss as much as I want if I keep on increasing the cross sectional area of the middle portion. So, that is important to note. The negative effect of this approach is that as I keep on making the cross sectional area of the middle portion, the overall system becomes bulkier and bulkier. So, that is there. So, then the other question is that If the noise source, so if noise source has several high amplitude frequencies, so, suppose there is a noise source which is producing a lot of noise at 50 hertz, it is also producing a lot of noise let us say at 130 hertz and a lot of noise at 170 hertz, then one single uh, muffler may not do the trick, right? it may not necessarily do the trick. So, in that case, so for such uh, situations, so for such situations, we have multiple we have multiple chamber silencers so you can have one uh, chamber can ad address a particular frequency, but if you have several sil uh, silences in a series, then those can cancel uh, individual frequencies. So, each, uh, cha each chamber tuned for a specific frequency. Okay, each chamber tuned for a specific frequency. So, I think I hope this gives you a fair idea of how uh, 
reactive ch uh, chambers work. So, this is a basic treatment of reactive chambers and their work mechanism and this will give you some idea of how to design a reactive silencer or a reactive muffler. Uh, what we plan to do next in today's class is we will discuss dissipative mufflers. So, how do dissipative mufflers work? So, we had discussed this or talked about this in the last class. Let us say we have a long pipe and I can coat or put on the inner surface of this long pipe some noise absorbing material. So, this is the simplest way to do it and the properties of this material should be that it should be able to hear bear high temperatures especially when the application is for engine exhaust because the temperatures of gases coming out of engines are pretty hot. So, as sound travels through this it gets absorbed through the pipe and lesser noisy less noisy gas exits out of the pipe. So, the first thing which is important to note is that if I have a pipe which is longer then more noise will get absorbed. A shorter pipe will absorb shorter uh, smaller amount of noise. The second thing to note is, so what are the important parameters? So, first is in dissipative mufflers length of pipe matters. Second thing which is important in such situations is that noise absorption property of liner. So, this is what we call liner right. So, noise absorption property of liner matters. If I have a material which absorbs more noise, then it will be more effective and vice versa. The third important property is that this cross sectional area. So, and the so, let us look at this pipe like this. So, this is my input inlet and this is my exit. So, noise is coming in from here and it is getting out from here. So, it will depend on the periphery length of the periphery of the pipe. If this periphery is larger, then it will get absorbed more right. So, it depends on periphery because periphery times length of the pipe will be the noise uh, absorption surface. So, periphery of cross section matters, higher the periphery better it is right. And the fourth one is cross sectional area. pipe matters, but think about it. If I increase the cross sectional area, if I increase the cross sectional area and assume for some reason that absorption alpha absorption properties are same, periphery is same, but cross sectional area has gone up, will in percentage terms less noise get absorbed or more noise will get absorbed more noise will be entering and flowing through the system right. So, so the relation between noise absorption characteristic and the length of the uh, pipe is a positive one. You increase the length more noise gets absorbed. Similarly, the relation between noise absorption property and transmission loss in a pipe is a 
positive thing higher absorption more transmission loss same thing for periphery larger is the periphery larger is the noise absorption area it is larger but this guy cross sectional area is negative because if i have bigger pipe more noise is flowing through right so the attenuation will be lesser attenuation will be lesser so with these four parameters in mind there was a person and his name was sabine or sabine he developed the transmission loss for absorptive mufflers so he said the transmission loss for absorption mufflers so absorption absorptive devices is equal to so this is an empirical relation 12.6 or or semi analytical relation times alpha to the power of 1 by 4 times perimeter divided by cross sectional area so here alpha what is alpha it is the absorption it is absorption coefficient of material it is absorption coefficient in our next class or subsequent classes one of our subsequent classes will define and we'll discuss what is this absorption coefficient but right now we'll just assume that it's a specific number and if this number is higher it means material uh, absorbs more energy and if it is less then it absorbs less energy so so that is there p so here p is not pressure it is periphery length in inches okay in inches and s is cross sectional area in inch square so he said sabine said that transmission loss is equal to 12.6 times alpha to the power of 1.4 times p over s so he talked about second parameter noise absorption he talked about periphery he talked about cross sectional area what about this so for this he said that this transmission loss coefficient is going to be for a pipe so this is the transmission loss for a pipe 1 feet in length and what is the unit of this transmission loss it is going to be in decibels so what this formula gives us is transmission loss in db per feet so if i have a 20 feet long pipe i can multiply this tl by 20 and that is what i am going to get in terms of transmission loss so let's look at an example so what we will discuss is a hybrid muffler so in this muffler we have a long pipe hmm and then there is an expansion chamber and then we have an exit so this is region 1 this is region 2 this is region 3 this pipe is 3 inch in diameter so this is dimension is 3 inch and here it is again 3 inch and in the middle portion it is 12 inch the other thing is that this pipe is lined with some noise absorbing material in portion 1 uniformly
and the alpha for this is given as 0 0.4 sorry it is 0 0.08. Zero point zero eight. So, this dimension, this pipe is six feet in length, and the middle portion is one meters long. And we are not bothered about the length of the exit portion. So, first what we will do is we will find transmission loss for reactive portion only. Okay. So, initially we will assume that this alpha is 0, so there is no dissipation happening in this thing and we will figure out the ratio transmission loss for this entire thing assuming that it is a purely reactive muffler. Okay. So, in that case T L equals 10 log of 10 1 plus now what is M? M is equal to A 2 over A 3 or more accurately it is A 1. So, this is what? it will be pi times 12 square divided by 4 divided by pi 3 square divided by 4. So, it is equal to 12 by 3. So, it is equal to 16. So, that is equal to 16 minus 1 over 16 square sin square k 2 L divided by 4 okay. and L is in this case how much 1 meter. So, this relation we have to use it is we can use either units the only thing is that if I take L in feet then I have to calculate the wavelength also in feet otherwise so, this does not depend on units, but the relation for absorption here we have to one, uh, do everything in inches because P is given that it has to be in inches and also S should be in inch square. So, so this is unit specific formula. Okay. So, L is in this case I take it as 1 meter and uh, what this gives me is 10 log of 10 1 plus 63.5 and L is 1 meters. So, I will just write sin square k 2. So, this is the relation. So, this is the T L for reactive muffler. Okay. The T L for reactive muffler. So, now we will construct a table. So, for different frequencies this k 2 is going to change. So, we will calculate for different frequencies what is the transmission loss. So, what are those frequencies f 40 hertz 50 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100 and my RPM. So, if this is connected to an engine then 40 hertz corresponds to 2400, 3000, 3600, 4200, 4800, 5400 and 6000 and corresponding to these frequencies T L transmission loss is going to be what? So, I have to just put the value of K 2 for corresponding to each frequency right. 
So, I have to for each frequency I have to find out the wavelength and then 2 pi over wavelength is k. So, once I know k I can calculate this transmission loss. So, this transmission loss is 5.4, 6.4, 7.1, 8.1, 9.1, 10.1, 11.1, 12.1, 13.1, 14.1, 15.1, 16.1, 17.1, 18.1, 19.1, 20.1, 21.1, 22.1, 23.1, 24.1, 25.1, 26.1, 27.1, 28.1, 29.1, 30.1, 31.1, 32.1, 33.1, 34.1, 35.1, 36.1, 37.1, 38.1, 39.1, 40.1, 41.1, 42.1, 43.1, 8.8 so what does that mean that if sound is coming at 100 decibels from here at let us say 80 hertz or when the engine is running as 4800 rpm then the output sound pressure level will be 80 minus 8 that is 92 decibels that is what it means. Now what we will do is we will say that now if duct is lined to absorb sound, then what is it? Then T L absorption uh, and the, the units are dB per feet that is equal to what is the relation? It is 12.6 this thing 12.6 times alpha to the power of 1.4 times p over s. So, this is equal to 12.6 times alpha is 0 0.08 to the power of 1.4 times perimeter is pi times 3 inches area is pi times 3 inches. 3 inch square into 4. Huh? So, if you do all this math, it comes to be 0 0.49 dB per feet or it is roughly 0 0.5 decibels per feet. Okay. So, now the overall pipe length is how much? So, T L absorption So, where is this uh, noise absorbing material put? It is put over this distance of 6 feet. So, so this is total. So, this is equal to 0 0.5 times 6 is equal to 3 dB. So, T L total okay, that is going to be 8.4. 9.4, 10.1. So, I am just adding 3 dB extra 10.7, 11, 11, 10.8 decibels. Okay. So, that is how you can uh, develop expressions for transmission loss for uh, mufflers which are uh, having reactive as well as absorptive uh, components. So, I think that concludes our discussion for today and uh, starting tomorrow we will shift gears and uh, again from an application standpoint we will start discussing how to analyze a noise signal and break it down into its uh, specific Fourier components. So, with that we conclude our discussion for today uh, and we will meet once again tomorrow. Thank you.